Today we explore a hospital and how it operates. A hospital is kind of like a miniature city with departments including food services, plant operations, and security. Intermountain Medical Center in Murray, Utah is the largest hospital in the Intermountain West and cares for more than half a million patients each year. In a month, over 55,000 patients will visit the medical center. The hospital administrator is in charge of more than 5,000 employees working in around 150 departments, all focused on providing extraordinary care. When you think of a hospital, do you first think of doctors and nurses? Those people are a big part of it, but there's also an entire staff working behind the scenes. The hospital can't operate without them. Like restaurants that prepare food for the public in a city, we have a staff that takes care of feeding everyone at the medical center. Margaret Hawk, Director of Food Services, is ready to show you where the food is prepared. Here we are in the Food and Nutrition Services Department, where we provide all of the hospital patient meals. We also have a retail cafeteria where we feed hospital employees and all of the visitors that come to the facility. We have 130 employees in this department. We employ registered dietitians, cooks, dietary technicians, and food service associates that work in our dish room. The main kitchen is busy at least 12 hours of the day, and the retail cafeteria is open 24 hours a day. We serve between 900 and 1,000 patient meals per day, and we also have over 2,000 transactions upstairs in the retail area. Nutrition is a main priority here, especially for the patients. We have to meet their nutritional needs. This is the patient tray assembly room where the patient meals are assembled. After the patients choose their meal, their choices are put on a ticket and we run it down what we call tray line. Our food is cooked, chilled, and plated cold, so this room is refrigerated. Each one of our associates stands at a station and puts on an entree, soup, vegetables, beverage, dessert, salad, and then the trays are loaded onto special rethermalization carts. So the rethermalization carts have special heating pods that reheat once they're activated by the computer. This is the computer panel. We have 24 stations where we can dock these specialized carts. The trays actually are, have cutouts to fit over the heat pods. The domes that go on the trays have a magnetic ring in the bottom of the lid and that activates the heating pod. If we want to serve a salad or a cold sandwich, we put on a different dome that does not activate the heating element and it keeps the hot food hot and the cold food cold. Like a city provides utilities to its residents, the medical center also has to manage utility systems. Director of Plant Operations, Glenn Roderick, is ready to take you around the campus to see some of these systems in action. My department is Plant Operations. Uh, we're responsible for everything from the roof to the roots on the campus. Currently we have 12 buildings and 97 acres that we're responsible for. In plant operations, we have 54 employees ranging from all different uh, levels, from electricians to landscapers. Electrical power is critical to patient care and, and all our other functions on the campus. We're required to have standby emergency power available at all times in the event that we lose city power. We currently have three generators that are capable of produce an emergency power for the campus. We run them weekly just to exercise the batteries, make sure they're going to start. We run them monthly under full load. Hospital operations can never go without power. There's some that are more critical than others. We can shed power to absolutely just put it in one spot like the ORs if we had to. We got a pretty smart system here. We're in the control room in the plant operations building. We control the emergency generation system, the heating and cooling for the campus, and our tube system. This is what we call the plant operations building. It houses the boiler room. We have four boilers. They produce steam. The steam is required for humidification, sterilization, and heating of the building. On the other side, we have the chiller room. The air conditioning is basically created through chilled water. We have this tube system. You could consider it our own private delivery system. It takes everything from patient records to specimens to blood samples. 
They put this foam in there, they protect it, they close it up, they seal it, shove it up the system and away it goes. Currently we do 1,500 to 3,000 transactions a day. These utility systems are carried throughout the campus through our, what we call our utility tunnel. We're approximately two stories underground, approximately five-eighths of a mile long, and it services every building on the campus. This side here is what we call the hot side. You got your high-pressure steam and also your fire suppression system, okay? And on this side is the cool side. You got your cooling water supply and cooling water return. And we're talking about the, the tube system. So the, here's the tubes that they actually roll by and if you hear it, here comes one now. And it's going out to the lab. And so these tubes, approximately 23 miles of them on campus, every department's got the ability to send one or receive one. Now another department that the hospital depends on 24 hours a day. Like a city has a police force, the medical center has a safety and security department. Glenn Buma heads up the department and he's ready to show you around. Hi, we're here in the Safety, Security, and Communications office. This is the, the main central hub for security and communications for the Intermountain Healthcare campus. Here, we process all the calls for the security officers across the campus, as well as all incoming calls for patients, visitors, and staff of the hospital. Maternal fetal medicine, one moment, please. We provide guest services for parking, for valet, and for shuttle services across the campus. The department has approximately 70 uh, employees. The security department has a canine program, part of our emergency management. Our canine dogs are trained to detect explosive devices. They're also trained to help with deterring uh, criminal activity. So here we are in the call center at Intermountain Medical Center, and this is where all the incoming calls are received for the facility, as well as codes that are brought into the facility, as well as those that we may be paging out to the emergency responders. Code red, emergency department. Code red, emergency department, first floor. They process calls for trauma services for all accident victims that may be brought to the facility. They have the experience and they have the background that they know how to deal with these situations when they come up. But it can be a very intense and stressful job to be involved in. But it's also very rewarding to know that they're a part of the patient care service and being able to get the right resources for treatment at any given time. And that ends our tour. You've gone into parts of the medical center that are rarely seen by regular visitors. From doctors and nurses to food service associates and security officers, they're all part of our hospital family, citizens of a miniature city. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you the best with your health science studies. This video is produced by Intermountain Healthcare, a system of hospitals, clinics, and an affiliated health insurance company. More than 33,000 Intermountain Healthcare employees serve patients in Utah and southeastern Idaho.